Chair, I now call to order the April 29, 2024 meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, and as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Mr. Baysmore or Ms. Seabolt if you must leave a call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Seabolt, please call the role of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Booker Dwyer? Present. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Drummond? And Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Okay, thank you. Ms. Seabolt, please call the role of staff members and guests participating in today's meeting. Mr. Baysmore? Uh, present. Ms. Charlie Green? Present. Thank you. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is an update on the committee purpose and measures of effectiveness. And so at this time, I will, um, I'm going to share my screen. I'll pull up the document and we will just talk through uh, the, the purpose and measures of effectiveness and see if there's any additional modifications that are needed. And if not, then we will uh, move it forward uh, to the full board. So for, for the purpose, are there any additional edits to the purpose that the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee is responsible for reviewing legislation that affects the board and the school system, and the committee develops legislative priorities that are reviewed and approved by the board? The committee meets monthly during the General Assembly session or meets as necessary and receives updates from the Director of the Office of Governmental Relations and Constituency Services. Any additional modifications? Okay. And then the measures of effectiveness. Uh, we develop legislative priorities in alignment with the goals of the school system, and we engage in legislative advocacy for established priorities through providing testimony, written responses, and meeting with legislators as necessary on submitted bills. Any modifications to that? Okay, so we will share this with the full board for consideration. If there are no additional modifications. So the next item on the agenda is uh, the legislation update beginning with the Baltimore County Ca Baltimore County Council Bill 3124 adequate public facilities overcrowded school districts. And so this is the bill that we discussed um, what that the, in, the intent of this bill is to address overcrowding in schools. And we we think the intent is it's great, but the, the mechanics of this bill and some of the, the items that are in this bill are a bit concerning. And so I wanted us to, as a legislative committee, just to go through some of the, some of the items in this bill that may be a bit concerning, and then just to discuss um, what we plan on, um, what action we should take uh, to address these items of concern. So I am going to share my screen and just talk through a couple of items. Okay, so you're all seeing a copy of the bill, correct? Yes, perfect. So the, the first thing that just stands out with this bill is um, this term of using interdepartmental. Um, and, and that's just because 
it's, it would, interagency would be a better word because we're not a department. The Baltimore County School Board, um, the, the school system, we're not departments within um, the Baltimore County Council. So, um, so that's kind of the first red flag that we would want fixed in this bill. And then this whole idea of um, requiring the Department of Education to provide certain reports, I'm not even sure if um, that is um, legally allowed uh, from the, by the County Council. So there is um, some, some concerns with that language. And then, you know, just once again, that interdepart interdepartmental word um, and then this idea around this establishment of interdepartmental committees um, for school overcrowding. There is just concern overall with just the transparency, the, the, the equity regarding the selection of, of memberships, of members to this interdepartmental committee, and then just the redundancy of, um, of actions that would be taken. So the board is already charged with doing a lot of this. And so just there will be confusion in just the roles and the responsibilities and the idea that, you know, we have people being appointed. We just um, discussed this whole transparency in the process in which how we um, identify people for, for certain positions. And I'm just worried that this could lead to um, some inequities. Um, and even just the whole appointment process is just not, um, I, I, it's just there is concern. And so I'll pause here. Uh, Ms. Lichter or Ms. Pumphrey, do you have any concerns with this, any of these, this section of the bill specifically regarding the development of this committee? Uh, Ms. Lichter? Um, I do. I mean, I, I'm wondering what the true why behind it is, and maybe that's what you mean by transparency. Um, I understand that we have an overcrowding issue and we have issues with building new schools, but this seems to take it pretty much out of our hands. I mean, we'd have one, I think it was one board member and one person appointed from by the superintendent, but um, I just am worried that there's some there's something behind it that, that I'm not sure what it is, and that is a huge worry. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've got a lot of concerns about what the what the true intent of this bill is. Ms. Pumphrey. I actually I think the intent is good. I think that some of the language and the verbiage is problematic. I agree with the issues that you um, brought brought forward. Um, I just I wonder if there is a way that we could that our legal team can work with can collaborate with the um, county office of law to sort of discuss um, changes that we would need or amendments that we would need to the bill in order to support it. So I would I would support the bill with certain amendments, including some of the issues that you brought forward. Ms. Lichter. Um, so this would negate like the my I pass and all of and the the audit that was done a couple years ago to determine which buildings were most in need of renovation, et cetera. So this would this would not, this would take the place of that, I'm assuming. We know that. It appears that it would, it's not clear. And then I'm also just unclear with, you know, there are certain state laws and things that are governed by the interagency um, commission on school construction that I'm, that this bill uh, appears not to be in alignment with. And so I would never want us to support something that may potentially not be in alignment with, um, with state law or um, state requirements. And so as a whole, I feel like this bill needs to go back to the drawing board. Um, I do think there's some legal intervention that's needed in there. Um, discussion with, um, to some discussion with the, the lawyers for, um, for both the Board of Education and with um, the, the County Council. And, and it would be great if we were partners in crafting this bill so that we could truly address the, the core concerns without um, being redundant in 
in committees. I mean, the last thing we need, I feel like in government, we have so many committees and task force and everything stays in committees and task force with recommendations. And then we never get to the point where there's any action. And I feel like this, this bill is just, there's another bureaucratic layer of red tape that we are adding um, to this whole process of, of school can, of addressing overcrowding in schools that's just not needed at this time. We do need to address overcrowding at schools, but the way to do it is not to, to, to then to create a whole other committee so that they can then sit and discuss and then send a recommendation to the board. Then we have to sit and discuss. And then the, it's just this bill to me, it just, it's, um, it's not an efficient way to get at the, the core concern. Uh, Ms. Pumphrey? I'm not sure that this is replaces my IPS, so I would need some clarification on that. I'm not sure if that's the intention, and I'm not sure that it if that it does, regardless if that's the intention. Um, we absolutely need to do something about overcrowding. I think what sticks out to me with this bill, um, although I agree that definitely needs amendments, and I definitely I certainly don't want to take any power away from the board. I think we need to keep, you know, what we do in our hands. Um, however, you know. The mere fact of addressing the 115% capacity issue and bringing that down to 100% um, is important, and I I just think it it's worth um, working with if we can government officials to change some of the language to make it more um, you know to make it reasonable compared to what we're looking for as far as overcrowding and addressing overcrowding. We have to do something because what we're doing now obviously is not working. We're seeing boundary study after boundary study after boundary study, um, and that's continuing even with my IPS. So we need to do something. I, I, I'm i not saying this is it, but I, I think it's worth um, looking into working with county government to see if we can address and make some amendments um, to make this more suitable to our needs. I definitely agree that working with county government to, to co-craft something that could meet the needs um, of, of everyone because there are just so many questions here. And I'm, I'm even the bigger concern that I even have is, I mean, are we now eliminating um, the voice of communities? Because when you start to just recommend one person appointed by, by someone who, um, where you don't really know the criteria, where you don't know, you know who, who has applied, how they applied, how they were selected. And then, um, so I just feel like just the whole selection process laid out in here is problematic. This whole idea of just creating another committee is problematic. If we want, it, I mean, the core goal, I think it, it is around this percentage piece. Um, and so that is going. So, Christina, this is what you were talking about that going from the 115 to 100%. Um, and so, if that is the goal, then I'm just not clear what the whole front matter of this bill has to do with that. Uh, Ms. Lichter. Um, I agree with the hundred, you know, the, the percentages we're looking at on the screen now. That's the one point I do. I don't, I'm worried that um, we are not, it's the recommendations of this committee are not going to come back to the board. I'm, I mean, that would need to be fleshed out too. To me, it reads like the committee now would take over the decisions that we would have made before this. So I think we just have to be really careful about that because we would just have one member on that board, on that committee. So we're totally outvoted if it's only one and there's 11 people. So I'm not reading it like they're to make recommendations to the board. I feel like this is instead of, but again, I could be wrong. Nope, I, I agree with you. And then I'm just wondering what, where is the research around um, the, the, you know, if we wanna ground our, our protocols and our processes and what we do on research, um, when we look to other school systems, we look at, you know, in Anne Arundel County and some of the other school systems that have uh, something similar, um, what were their lessons learned? Uh, and so I, I just, I feel like more work needs to be done on this bill to, to number one, ensure that it is informed by research, that is that it is um, just legally solid, that it is not creating another layer of, of red tape um, to just delay uh, actions by holding them up in committee discussions. And then, um, and then lastly, once again, I just get to, you know, board members are elected. They, they go through a public vetting process, and then you have board members that are appointed that goes through another vetting process. When you start just having people pick people because of criteria that we don't know, 
um, and there's no real public vetting, then you can begin to create inequities. And when I think back to our legislative priorities, you know, the board is number one, not we're not in support of anything that um, would take power away from the Board of Education. And this appears to do just that. And then when we just think about we have this moral imperative around equity um, and this bill is reading as at least around that selection piece um, as creating some true uh, as intensifying inequities in Baltimore County. And so I'm just very concerned with the the language in this bill, and um, and I would really welcome the opportunity to work in partnership um, with our with uh, those in county council to craft something that is um, aligned with equitable outcomes for our students, and that really a, a research based approach to overcrowding, and is that in is also in alignment with um, with state and local laws. Uh, Ms. Pumphrey. I mean, Ms. Lichter. I'm sorry, I didn't put my hand down. I don't. I, skip me. <laughs> okay. So we know that uh, the that there will be um, this bill is going before the, um, the the county council tomorrow. And I would like to craft some talking points and to submit um, and to register to testify on behalf of the board. I will reach out to the board, mem other board members as well, but with the permission of this committee, and I will, um, you know, to move this forward to the full board, some of our concerns um, and to, to testify tomorrow um, really against this bill as it is, um, and then to propose collaborating to craft something that is grounded in research aligns to that meets the requirements of law and um, it, it exemplifies equitable practices for our students. Ms. Pumphrey, what are, what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I just in order for me to be in full agreement, I think I would need to see what um, what we're saying here because I don't fully not support this bill. I think it needs to be. I think there needs to be amendments and changes. Um, but there are portions of the bill that I do support, so I wouldn't be comfortable saying at the moment. And of course, it would be a full board. You know, the board would have to agree, but I wouldn't agree with at the moment saying that we 100% don't support this bill. And so, what part of this bill do you agree with? Sorry, my mic was off. <laughs> my mic was off. Um, well, my understanding, of course, is the intent. The intent is to really uh, to help with overcrowding. And when you're looking at the percentages, bringing it down from 115 to 100 percent, that's a very important part of it. Um, but I also agree with everything what you said as far as appointing members in an equitable fashion. Um, I think there's changes that need to be made, but I think there is some meat to this that's important. Um, and like I said previously, I would want some clarification as far as um, my IPAS and you know. Um, ensuring that this isn't meant to replace this, which my belief is it's not. Um, but I could be incorrect about that, so I would like some clarification about that as well. Okay. And then even with these percentages that they are, so of course we want our schools at 100%. I am, I'm questioning with, with some of the protocols and the policies from the IAC because okay let's say we get schools to 100 percent we know to get funding from the IAC we have to demonstrate that the school is overcrowded so is now the county council going to be willing to put supplement funds um, for us to build additional buildings that we will not receive from the IAC if this bill is passed so those are the kind of things I think that we need to address because we could be setting ourselves up in Baltimore County to to not get funding from the state, which is um, an essential, which is essential for our school construction. And so I, I get it. We want to get our schools to 100%. And by enacting this law, are we unintentionally now creating an, a funding stream issue? And will the county council be willing to cover the millions that we now may not get from the state? Um, when it comes to construction because of, of this law that we have on the books. And so I think those types of questions need to be answered, um, which is why I think this bill really needs to be um, 
recrafted so that that is clear and upfront because while it sounds great to get schools at 100%, there, there's a contradiction in state law in the way that state awards funds for construction projects. And, and we saw that play out with, with having the closed camp field. So um, are we unintentionally setting ourselves up now for not getting the funding that we need to do what we need for school construction and, um, and expansion? And will the county council be willing to cover that? And, and that's going to be something that, um, that that's, a, that's going to be a big deal. So this is why I say that this whole bill needs to be revised um, and just we need to start from scratch here so that we are not creating some, you know, the this bill is going to translate into practice and we don't want to um, have some unintentional pitfalls, which I think is, is going to happen with this bill as is. Um, even with if, even if we just say we're going to amend this and tweak the word here, I don't think that would be enough. I do think that there needs to be a total redevelopment of this bill um, grounded in research, aligning to state law and um, and having some real practical solutions for, for Baltimore County that will address um, some equitable practices. It's it's Miss Lichter again. Yeah. Um, am, am I from what I understand, the county council can only cut the county executive's budget. So right. I just I just don't understand either how this committee would make recommendations, but how are we funding their recommendations? So I just, uh, but I might not be understanding correctly, but I too am very concerned with with the bill as is. I, I'm, I'm very concerned. This will cause, if this, I just feel like the way that this bill is written, this, we would need more money for school constructions to come out of local dollars. And that can translate into increased taxes. It can translate into a lot of different things. And so until we can truly address how this bill is going to impact us financially, I just don't see the, um, we really need to take this bill back to the drawing board. I would encourage county council to take this bill back to the drawing board and to develop, and to develop this in partnership. So, Ms. Humphrey, would that change your your mind, or do you? I'm, so, we'll, we'll type some things out, and we'll we'll share it with the board. Um, either way, I will. You know, if, if it doesn't come from the full board as an individual, I will definitely um, be on the call tomorrow um, in providing some feedback. But I would rather it come from the board. So, I will send out some language um, today around that, but just, and, but the language that I'm going to send out is going to be around kind of what I'm speaking through now. So what are your thoughts on that? Ms. Pumphrey. Uh, my thoughts honestly haven't changed. So we disagree a little bit here, which is fine. Um, I'm not sure what, you, and I don't know how that makes things move forward. Um, if you need a full board response or, um, I know you can speak on your, on your, you know, as an individual, of course. So, um, I'm not sure that my position has changed at this point. Um, do we know what the timing, the timeline is? So when will they vote on this? I mean, do we have a chance to get to the full board before it? I'm not, do we know that information? And so Mr. Bazemore, is the vote scheduled for tomorrow or are they just hearing um, testimony and discussing tomorrow? Um, tomorrow is the um, um, work session where they'll be dis discussing the bill. It's not a voting session. And with this particular bill, um, they're going to have two work sessions. Um, one tomorrow and anybody wishing to sign up must sign up tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they're very strict about that. And you can testify in person or virtually. Um, they have a hybrid. Uh, so the first bite of the apple, because the bill was introduced a couple of weeks ago, the first bite, first reading, is tomorrow where you know the public and anyone that want to weigh in can weigh in uh, two weeks from there they're going to have another work session where again anybody that wants to weigh in on the bill can can speak and again you must sign up the day of between 9 a.m and 3 p.m and then after that the third reading they will vote it's important um to show up at these work sessions 
um, and, and, and speak either person, you know, in person or virtually. You don't want to wait until you get to the vote. I, I will clarify again that I do agree that there are, change, there are major changes that need to be made. I want to make that clear. I'm not comfortable with the bill as it is, just to be clear. <laughs> and so I will type up uh, essentially some of the points that I've crafted that, that we've discussed um, during this session, and I will um, share with board members and, uh, and along with the timeline for, for everything um, with this bill. and. Um, and perhaps we could send the link of this meeting to to the to the um, some county council members um, so that they can hear this discussion because um, it it is concerning that the intent is 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 good to we want all want to reduce overcrowding but we need to be equitable we need to ensure that our fun, funding will not be impacted um, and we need to be in. in ensure that we are in alignment with um, state and local laws. Um, I'm not sure I feel good about sending this meeting just because we were kind of talking it through. Um, so I would prefer the bulleted, um, you know, the, the points that you were talking about putting together on paper, but um, I, just my thought. Yes. Although it is it is public, I, it will be. right? It's public <laughs> for people who want to go on and listen. I know. Okay. Any other discussion about this particular bill? Okay, Mr. Bazemore, I'm going to turn it over to you to to keep us moving through some of some of the other bills. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and committee members. And I have to say, first and foremost, to everyone on this committee, thank you for your engagements this year. Um, we had a record number of bills in the state legislature. Um, I looked up a couple of numbers. There was over 1,500 House bills, over 1,100 Senate bills, and close to 400, maybe even more, uh, education bills. And we were following all of the education bills, working with Mabe and Pazam. Uh, Madam Chair, you and Vice Chair Pumphrey were engaged with Mabe at the legislative meetings. We had folks come down and testify on certain bills. We had folks uh, write write letters, um, make phone calls. So we were engaged uh, this session and it was quite busy um, and we did really well. Um, I really want to give a shout out to everybody on this committee for being engaged and to me. It's, it, I'm always amazed at how engaged they are and how their, their main thing is to make sure that local governance um, local boards can can govern themselves. You're duly elected and appointed, and they work really hard to do that. So thank you, everyone, for that. Um, I, I just picked out three, three, six bills out of the 400. <laughs> just as an example, um, Madam Chair, of of, of the session. Um, and the first bill is Senate Bill 84, House Bill 116, the Teacher Degree Apprenticeship Program Bill that we discussed in our legislative meetings that we supported, that Mabe supported. And I, and I brought this out because sometimes good bills do not make it. And I think that's important to um, say sometimes. Um, and I just wanted to say that this bill actually passed on the Senate side. It was introduced by Senator Rosa Pep, but then when it came on the House side, and I believe because of the volume of work that Ways and Means had and everything that was going on this session, um, I don't think it didn't get out of committee because it was a bad bill. I think it just got caught in in the um you know it was just a lot of bills this year so um this bill didn't make it um this apprenticeship program is, is one of the um key things that all locals are uh, are supporting to try to um have a grant um for those who are um you know want to enter the, the teaching profession that they um establish these apprenticeships to help you know with compensation and help them get their teaching degrees because we have a teacher shortage um, but again, they 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 would agree to work, you know, within the system. So this bill, I'm sure, will come back uh, next year. I'm sure to probably be uh, pre pre filed. But I just want to highlight that not all good bills pass. But I'm sure that one will, uh, will be back um, next year. Um, the next bill I wanted to highlight was HB 108, Senate Bill 451, and that was the um, Baltimore County Board of Education non-student members compensation and student member 
compensation in the form of a scholarship. Um, this this local bill really was to bring into alignment the compensation for board members um, and, and the scholarship for the student member in line with 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 the rest of the state. Um, you as you all know, it, it's it's a very demanding job um, and there's a lot of hours, a lot of research, a lot of data, a lot of uh, meetings uh, that are put forth um, as a board member and as a student member. So um, this was a local bill for Baltimore County um, where it increased the uh, the compensation for the board members um, um, and, and the scholarship for the uh, for the students. And we had um, uh, support from our school system on this, uh, Madam Chair and, and a few others, uh, Vice Chair Pumphrey and others um, supported that, that bill. Um, Maryland Mills for Achievement. I want to highlight that one because from day one, um, uh, Vice Chair Christina Pumphrey has been championing um, all of the bills actually that um, help to um, feed out, feed out, you know, students and, and provide meals and, and to just to make sure that no child is um, in class and, um, you know, hungry, essentially. Um, this this um, HB 386 is the Maryland Meals for Achievement in Classroom Breakfast Program. Uh, healthy meals that are distributed throughout the school in non-traditional ways. And so the bill was crafted um, so that you can have grab and go carts and other non-traditional ways to uh, um, 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 feed this, you know, provide meals for the students. Um, because the traditional way, every child doesn't get the meals um, when you just have one way. So they have a lot of flexibility now, the individual schools and how they can reach those children that they know and they can identify and they know who they are and have, um, you know, healthy meals for them. So uh, Vice Chair Pumphrey, thank you for your advocacy for these uh, 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 bills as well. So that that passed and um, the next bill is Senate Bill 78 and House Bill 495. This is the uh, Baltimore County School Board Nominating Commission. Um, uh, I call it the Transparency, uh, Open and Transparent uh, C Bill. It basically is saying that when there is a vacancy and um, our uh, nominating commission um, um, that vets all of the candidates to make a recommendation to the governor um, to appoint someone, um, they wanted to make sure that this process was open and transparent and that candidates names would be published, that certain meetings that they held would be um, taped and made available to the public. Um, they also uh, uh, wanted to honor also interviews. We know that when people go in for interviews, you know, there's a, um, you know, wanted to, to, to honor that, you know, um, a process as well. Um, but then have the recordings available of the interviews if someone wish, you know, wishes, wish to see it. So um, the, I, I think it was a, you know, good, it finally hit the right place because it went around a few times and they wanted to make sure that we wasn't invading anyone's privacy and doing these, doing these interviews and, and that, um, you know, they, they struck a good balance between openness and transparency and, and keeping the public informed. So I think they wound up at a good place with this. So this bill um, passed as well, it's SB 78. And then um, again, Grow Your Own Educators Grant Program, Senate Bill 937 and HB 1157, again, going back to trying to grow our own uh, uh, teachers, you know, because of the teacher uh, shortage. Um, this grant program, uh, uh, this bill did pass. So we were happy to see this bill passed that will, um, you know, help um, locals, um, you know, grow our own educators in, in, in Baltimore County and the other local jurisdictions. So all in all, we had a, a really good session. There were bills that um, um, we helped to amend, uh, MABE and PAZAM, that were bills that had good intention. But when you get into the weeds and, 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 and look at the bill, um, some of them had um, would have had bad or, or inadvertent consequences on the locals. So we were very successful in getting some of those bills um, amended so that they wouldn't have a 
have an unintended um, negative consequence on local school jurisdictions. And that's that's very important um, to that we have that type of advocacy in Mabe and Bazam down in Annapolis. So again, I just want to thank everybody for their um, engagement this year and uh, look forward to next year, Madam Chair. Yes, and, and thank you for all of your hard work during this legislative session. And so are there any questions from Ms. Pumphrey or Ms. Lichter uh, about the, the bills that were shared? Okay. The next item on the agenda is next steps and future meeting. Oh, do you need to go over this slide, Mr. Bazemore? Yes, ma'am. We provided on our website the 90 day report from Annapolis, the uh, state legislature, which um, actually gives um, it's a large document, but it goes over the whole 90 day session um, uh, with data, facts and, and, and information. And then we also wanted um, and thank you, Madam Chair and Vice Chair. We all we also wanted to include this year the May uh, 2024 um, um, summary on, on, on a session. That's very informative, too. It, it, it highlights and shows the um, um, bills that they were engaged with and uh, give a great overall view of, of uh, this legislative session. So we wanted to make that available to the to to the public and to our committee members um, if they wanted to, um, you know, check those two documents out. Thank you. So the last item on the agenda is announcements. Today's meeting, this is our final Get our today's meeting is the final meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for the 2023-2024 school year. Committee meeting dates for 2024-2025 will be posted on the website once finalized. If necessary, if we need to meet again for, um, you know, before some other bills, we will schedule a meeting. But as of right now, um, there are no additional meetings scheduled until, um, until the 2024-2025 school year. Is there any further business? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. Thank Bye. you, Erin.